Hi, it's a pleasure to be here today, and I'm sure I'm not the first and I'm not the last to congratulate you on the awesome achievement of getting into the NYU Wagner School. It's really a fabulous, and it's fabulous to see you here, and I hope we're going to be seeing lots of each other in the coming years. It's a really, really exciting time to be in the public policy space and to be in the public management space. Whether you're thinking about working in the city level or the state level or the national or international level for a nonprofit, for a government, whatever it may be, whether your passion is to think about how to deliver health care to people or get the trash picked up faster, whether it's trying to create the important public goods that nonprofits and governments work on, or in essence, what we're all here to do is to think about how to improve people's lives. We have these fabulous new tools available to us today that we've never had access to before. Up until now, policymaking has been, in some sense, what a friend of mine calls a largely fact-free zone. Right? We have to sort of guess what are the best ways to deliver services. We have to guess and we have to refer to evaluations that we do after the fact to try to understand what works and what's not working. But the time that you're coming to school, the time that you're thinking about coming here, we have these powerful new tools available to us today that can allow us to learn better in real time what's working and what's not working. So I want to talk about three of those extremely briefly today and hopefully just whet your appetite for learning more. The first, of course, is what you've often heard talked about in the news, the idea of big data. How big is big data? Big. It's just really, really big. There's no great definition of what that means, but big data is essentially that what's sometimes called data exhaust, the stream that comes off of your Facebook account and your cell phone and your shopping records, all of this massive amounts of information that we are producing every day, often without our knowledge or awareness, that we can now mine to understand better how to do things like deliver services. That's what the Geek Squad does, this new office in New York City that looks at the data that we're putting off from our devices, from the sensors that are around our city that can tell us where is the noise, where is the pollution, so that we can target scarce resources to get help there faster, so that we can know not just how to treat people after the fact when they're sick, but predict beforehand who's going to get sick and target them faster. This big data, these massive quantities of information are giving us new insights about whole populations, about whole regions, cities, states, etc., that can allow us really to understand better the situation on the ground and govern differently than we've ever done before. What you might not have heard much about, though, is small data. Sometimes it's called that. And that's essentially not the data about all of New York City, but it's the data just about you. It's the data that your Fitbit or your uh, uh, Pebble watch is throwing off. It's the data that's being collected about the purchases you make at Whole Foods, the coffee that you paid four and a half dollars for this morning at Starbucks. When we have that personal data, you're about to go to grad school, Cut back on those Starbucks coffees. The, it's that personal data stream that can often tell us a lot when we have access to it, when it's reflected back to us about how to change our own behavior so that we can improve our own state of wellness. This is sometimes called the quantified self for the quantified community movement. There's been moves in the energy sector in particular. The government has been involved in it in projects like OpenEI to help ensure that electrical and utility companies are providing back to you the data visualized about your energy consumption to allow you to know, boy, I should maybe turn down the thermostat because I'm an energy hog. It's based not just on understanding about technology, but on understanding about social science. That if we give people a little nudge, a little hint through a picture to show them how they're taking too many showers, they might change what they do for the better, not just of one person, the betterment of one person, but of all of us. By making that data available, it's not just a government project, it's also a corporate project. Companies are getting in the mix, whether it's the utilities or groups like Opower, that are having not just better visualizations, but competitions between you and your neighbors to allow you to compete against them for who can reduce their energy consumption the most. So these are interesting new strategies, again, not just in terms of the tech, in terms of the social science, in terms of new kinds of public-private partnership. Oh, there's our Opower. The last innovation that I want to talk to you about relates to both big and to small data. And it's a related concept, and that is the concept of open data. 
Now, you can have large, big data sets, all of the data that's thrown off about social relationships on Facebook, but that doesn't mean you have access to it. Whole Foods knows everything about how much kale you bought this week, but you don't know how much. What open data is, is the notion that whether it's corporate data or government data, that this data should be accessible to us, should be available to us to use and reuse so that we can do these powerful things with it that can improve the quality of our lives and our communities. It's having a lot of potential, and I say potential because these are new tools that we're just figuring out how to use. This has the opportunity to unlock huge amounts of value in our society. A lot of that value is often quantified in uh, financial terms. The kind of money that we can make, the kind of money that we can save if we can reduce the cost of our health care, if we can reduce the cost of delivering basic services, if we can also help create new companies that use this data in new ways in order to do things like create the thermostat competition or, as we'll talk about, do things like deliver to you the GPS that powers your car or your uh, phone that allows you to find that Starbucks that's near you, the weather, the data that you checked this morning from weather.com or on your iPhone that told you that it was going to be a rainy day today, all of that is powered by open government data, data that has been collected thanks to your taxpayer dollars by the government and then made available to us that includes individuals, universities, companies, and you'll hear a lot today about how scholars at Wagner are using this kind of data to really do tremendous things to improve people's lives, the kinds of insights that they are able to draw. When I started in the government, there was just this notion of open data was just in its infancy. Now it is a movement that has spread all around the world with countless governments putting out now over a million data sets that range from the data about when your bus or your subway is coming to data sets about public health, to nutrition, to you name it. You can look on data.gov now or one of the many equivalents of data.gov around the world and see how people are using data to make transformational change in these various sectors. So again, whether it's big or small, making it open, making it available without legal restriction, without cost, and without technical restriction is a powerful way to unlock a great deal of value in our society. And we're beginning to quantify what that value looks like. Here at Wagner, we are doing a study called the Open Data 500 to go beyond these grand prognostications about $1.1 trillion in value and to really get gritty and granular and understand how people are using that data. It's Wagner students that are working with us on calling 500 companies in the United States and now we're branching out to Europe and the rest of the world to understand how are they actually using data? How is it creating jobs? What, is it, what kind of tools and visualizations and models are they developing that improve people's lives? And above all, to now connect business to government to try to figure out how we can get more data out in better and more useful formats. We open up this data as they're doing now in Camden, which was on the news just this morning. We're able to get that kind of data that helps us predict and understand where Ill illness is happening so that we can target the delivery of better services faster. I encourage you to go look it up. I have not enough time to talk about it today. But above all, what happens when we open data is it allows not just us to do better kind of scientific modeling. It allows us to be active citizens and participants in our own communities. This is a fabulous example called the Fire Department app that I wanted to talk to you about just for a second. As a result of opening up the stream of 911 calls in the communities in which they are active, they are going from the picture that you see on the right, uh, which is the number of first responders, fire departments, police departments that can come to your aid when you have a heart attack, to the picture that you see on the left, which is all of the people who are CPR certified who get the tweet that tells them or the text that tells them there is someone having a heart attack near you rush to their aid, and for every minute that's saved by giving someone bystander CPR, we are actually able to increase their life expectancy by 50%. This is the power of open data. By opening up that 911 stream, it allows each of us to participate. And you've heard tell or talk or read in the news about the hackathons and data paloozas and events, and we do many of these at Wagner, that are bringing you and me together with government, with business, to come up with new ways to use data. 
So whether it's big data or small data, the power of open data and this new movement in policymaking is that it allows each of us to, be, to take advantage of that, not just the people in government or companies that hold it. If you want to know more, since I have to conclude my time, I encourage you to take a look at our GovLab Academy website. We have lots of videos and training video materials about data and open data. We have wonderful wiki resources about open data, again, all written and created by Wagner students. Uh, we have a weekly digest every week that we put out. And the easiest way you can get more information is by following the Twitter feed that gives all of the best voices and people uh, in the open data field and in the big and small data field so you can learn more about this fabulous uh, set of innovations. This is just one set of tools that are now available to us today to make policy in a better way, to manage in a better way, and to improve people's lives. Thank you very much.